Kızı. Mentioning uh, Spinosaurus, uh, you are uh, you were pivotal in debunking some major misconceptions about its appearance and behavior, maybe. And we we understood uh, him as fully aquatic dinosaur, but he is not that. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know there was a there was a famous German scientist Stromer who went to Egypt. He actually went to Egypt to look for mammals, but. He ended up in the Western Desert, and him and his one assistant found the original bones of Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus, and essentially Deltadromius. He, he didn't name an appropriate bone that would allow me to save that name. Then they were all destroyed in World War II in Munich, Germany, and the dinosaurs went through extinction a second time, all the bones. And... My work in Africa started basically rediscovering Stromer's dinosaurs. And so we went to ChemCam and discovered Carcara dinosaurs. I actually had a name for it before I realized I think it's the same as, as Stromer found. Because if, if you think of the African continent, I began to realize Egypt across the Mediterranean coast, Tunisia, Morocco, mm -hmm. it's all the same latitude. It had a similar environment. That means the animals on one end very likely very similar to the ones on the other end. As you go up and down in latitude, it changes. So that by the time you get to Niger, even coeval beds, you'll get different species. But from Egypt, 2,000 miles to Morocco, I couldn't separate them. And so I had to name it the same thing. It was reinventing Stromer's dinosaurs. Carcara dinosaurus, ultimately a good skeleton of Spinosaurus came to light. It was taken out, out of the fossil market. We found pieces, but... we. The skeleton was found. Delta Dromius, that's the, the skull of it back there. Uh, you know, we found that. Um, but the Spinosaur, and then 2014, I wrote a paper saying it was semi-aquatic, sort of like in a, a crocodile, enjoying water, but not really fully marine. And then others found the tail, and they made it into this diving marine thing, which is easier to do, let's put it that way, in animation than it might be in real life. We tested that by trying to do it with the dinosaur. I never believed it on the basis of anatomy, but some arguments in on dinosaur life, their appearance, are answerable, and some are not. Some are very difficult. Like how well did Spinosaurus Rex smell? Very difficult to answer that. Or exactly what did the feathers on Tyrannosaurus? We probably know Tyrannosaurus Rex has feathers. I have a mummy that's got a skin. There's no scales. Probably had feathers. But what color? We don't know. Unanswerable at this point. For Spinosaurus, asking whether it could dive, whether it was a diver, good enough to, it didn't have the power to pursue something. Oh, there's lots of science evidence that you could throw at that one. As long as you can make an accurate model and calculate, say we gave it lungs of this size or lungs of that size or lungs of that size, and we put the air in the vertebrae where we see the air pockets. How light is it? How heavy is it? Could it, could it dive? Let's give it a tail. We know the tail now. Let's make it out like the crocodile tail. We know how much thrust a crocodile tail can put. We know how much thrust you get from the limbs of a crocodile with a little bit of webbing on the toes. How does it work? And the answer is it doesn't. There's simply no way this animal could dive. It's too light. You think it's this big, heavy, huge. No. It has air in not just its lungs, but it's in its vertebrae. And it way offsets what, uh, what, what it would have in any bones uh, to keep it down. And then second, it doesn't have the power to dive. You really need power to dive if you can't be negatively buoyant. Mm -hmm. And also, it has a very awkward uh, balance. It wants to tip over on its side if you make the model. And uh, for animals that, have, that are tipsy, you have to have stabilizers. There's no way for it to get up off its side once it was laying down its side in water. So I I believe it was very adept in the shallows. It could go up to two meters depth without any problem, but that it was not a diver and it would be way too slow to catch anything underwater anyway. And, um, you know, and I think we've tried to prove that. We have a paper coming out in a week uh, taking apart. The, so this idea that it was underwater was put out there. As a matter of fact, cover story of nature. A lot of people started making animations. 
And uh, and so then we wrote a rebuttal to it, and then they came back with one idea that no one has challenged the dynamics that we we put together. So it's like three two strikes, but then they came back and said it has denser bones, and in fact, some spinosaurs are divers, other spinosaurs are not. We were very surprised at this because um, we had actually done the bone sections, and so we went in to examine that idea and and really found it open-minded, but really found it wanting. I mean, it really, there's no basis for it. And so that paper's coming out uh, in a week, um, just completely destroying this idea uh, that a little bit of density in the hind limb bones meant it was a diver. In fact, there's no evidence for that. And and we we really, it's a long paper, we, we, we go to show that. And so mm-hmm. part of the argument in our original rebuttal was fruit on the tree, new fruit on the tree. I'm going to describe a spinosaur from Niger that has no chance to get to an ocean margin. It's as big as the other one. It's going to be a diving animal. Where? You know, it was found next to sauropods in a river deposit next to a carcar dinosaur, the standard fauna. So we've been influenced by where these dinosaurs are found because in fact, in Africa, we have a lot of shoreline deposit. In the middle of the desert, it gets weathered away. You only have pockets. Niger has most of it. There's pockets in Algeria, pockets in Libya. Yeah. But Niger has a lot, a little bit in Egypt, a little bit in the Chem Chem. But the, the Chem Chem is marginal. Tunisia, marginal. Egypt, marginal. You're looking at an ocean, a near ocean fauna. Don't yeah. think that that is giving you the whole idea of the continent. When you go into Niger, you realize spiders first were inland. I'm sorry, there's no whale that operates inland, you know, whale-sized animal that's actually diving marine. No, they, they are only by the ocean. So this idea, when we find things in the Chem Chem and in Egypt and so on, um, it's near the ocean and it's in deposits that it's hard to tell where the animals were living, how much they were living on land and how much they were marine because they're all sort of mixed together. You find shark teeth because it's a delta. And so we're on the delta, in the water, on you, you, you really don't know. And so, um, especially when the material is moved. And so the way to really answer is that to go inland and say, well, do we find them inland? And the answer is yes, we do. And I, I, I think it's a beautiful dinosaur, uh, but I think it's a semi-aquatic dinosaur. And um, it's a fascinating dinosaur. But it's actually, you know, for me, the scientific importance of it is this. It's not whether it was diving or non-diving. It's this question. Why wasn't it diving? If it had all the chance, dinosaurs had all the chance to become divers. They were living for 150 million years on all the continents, dominating them with so much shoreline because the continents had drifted apart, more shoreline than even today. And they never went in the water. Mm-hmm. That's I, I've got a paper coming out with a yeah. a colleague on trying to answer that question. We think we know why. Uh, Ooh. That's actually the more that's actually the more significant question because many many groups have gone back into the water. You have even waterborne snakes. You have mosasaurs that were once lizards. You have ichthyosaurs that were once primitive reptiles. Among the mammals, you of course have whales, but you also have pinnipeds. You have sirenians that the many animals have, have gone back into the water to lead an aquatic life, turtles. You know, why not dinosaurs? What what was going on there? And I think that the answer is, is that they were upright, had a stiff body, and they had this fish-like tail. And until they got rid of the fish-like tail, the only way they could swim is like a fish, but their trunk was not designed for that. They were upright. They were moving uh-huh. forward. Mammals had the same problem. And that's why the early part of the mammals, there's no marine forms. But as soon as they got rid of the tail, in the sense of being a small tail, to become prehensile to, or like us, us to, when we go in the water, we swim up and down like that. So does every mammal. And they never, mammals never went into the water until they got rid of the tail. As a, the tail used to be, and it is in spinosaurus, you see that big tail. What is the tail there for? Yeah, it wags. But the tail is fundamentally there for a big muscle that goes to the hind leg to pull it back and walk. 
And what mm-hmm. they did is they hooked this muscle up to the hip bone instead. It's our butt muscle. They hooked it up, or another one, up to the hip bone so you don't need the tail anymore. Now you can swim any way you want. Until they did that, the only way you could go back in the water is if you were not a very good upright animal and you could just swim away. And that's what crocodiles did. That's that's how ichthyosaurs went in the water. That's how everything before dinosaurs and mammals went to the water. But dinosaurs and mammals started walking upright. Mm-hmm. And your only chance is to get rid of that tail and swim up and down like this. Mammals did it. Mm-hmm. Dinosaurs did it too, but only after they lost the tail, which is to say birds. So birds immediately went back in the water. So it's a, these are fascinating stories that um, dinosaurs can encourage us to to try to answer. Mm-hmm. We stay genuine, uncensored, and unscripted, and we always will, as we have to order our usual. Share us, subscribe us, and stay tuned until the next Wednesday. Iguzo!